Welcome to this exciting video where we explore the intersection of technology and thrills. Today we're going to use the power of artificial intelligence to design a completely new and unique roller coaster. We'll be working with the latest algorithms to create a ride that's sure to push the boundaries of what's possible in coaster design. By the end of this video, you'll see how AI can revolutionise the world of amusement parks and take roller coasters to the next level. So buckle up, hold on tight, and let's get started. I'm Rollercoaster David, and these are my experiments in getting an AI to design a roller coaster. Now, if you're a regular to the channel, you may have thought that intro sounded a little different to what I usually do, and that's because it was written by an AI. This is one example of getting an AI to make something creative based on a simple prompt. In this case, write an intro for a YouTube video about using an AI to design a roller coaster. So getting that intro written was pretty easy, but actually getting an AI to design a roller coaster from the ground up would be quite a bit more difficult. This quest would take me in some quite surprising directions, and some of the things created were really quite remarkable. The end result was not what I expected at all, so let's take a look at what it took to get there and some of the things I discovered along the way. Now using a computer program for this sort of task isn't anything new. As far back as Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, there's been a function to autocomplete a ride, with the wiggly blue worm of trial and error brute forcing a solution to join two points together. The end result often looks quite strange though, and would rarely create a satisfying ride. Even more modern games such as Planet Coaster tend to go for the simplest solution, again creating something that would almost certainly break your neck if it were built for real. None of these would do for my goal of an AI design coaster, so I needed to think a bit differently. To my knowledge, there isn't currently a dedicated AI program that will automatically design a 3D roller coaster from scratch, and I'm far from a computer programmer myself. Indeed, I can demonstrate pretty much the entirety of my programming knowledge here on an emulator of the trusty BBC microcomputers we had at school. Starting out basic, no pun intended, would seem like a good idea, however, so I started my quest with asking the ChatGPT AI to write a program for this archaic computer that would draw a picture of a roller coaster. It didn't work. I didn't give up though, and after telling the AI to try again and feeding it back the errors I was getting, it eventually produced this. Okay, so it's upside down, and I have no idea how to fix that. But you could argue that it looks somewhat like a roller coaster, and has been created by AI, so mission accomplished? Nope, I think I can do better. So I went on to explore the world of AI image generation, which produced some mixed but interesting results. There are several AI image generators out there, and like any natural Scotsman, I tried all the ones I could get my hands on without having to pay any money. These included Canva, CF Spark Art, Crayon, Dali 2, Midjourney, Photor, Night Cafe, Stable Diffusion, and Starry AI. Dali 2 seemed like a good place to start, as it's linked to the ChatGPT AI I'd been using earlier. I started with simple prompts and refined them to try and get what I wanted. Simply asking to draw a roller coaster produced some interesting results, however, I tried to get more specific with my prompt to get the AI to make something more realistic and show me the whole layout of the track. I tried even asking for technical drawings to get an accurate design, but whilst these at a glance look promising, they all seem to depict only part of a roller coaster, or incomplete elements that wouldn't work in reality. It was also a bit too easy to get distracted asking for silly things like a Samoyed or a Shiba Inu riding a roller coaster, but the results of those were awesome. I even tried mentioning specific manufacturers, which did give some promising results. The prompt for this one mentions Intamin, and I can't help but notice a slight resemblance to Fahrenheit at Hershey Park. This one mentioned B&M, and I think it's tried to draw one of their inverted coasters, albeit at a very strange angle. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Afterburn at Carowinds. Next up, I tried to use Stable Diffusion and CF Spark, and the results were a bit disappointing. The images seemed to be warped and unrealistic, and one of them wasn't even that much better than what the BBC microcomputer had created earlier. CF Spark seemed to be using poster paints or finger painting as its design method, compared to what some of the more sophisticated AIs were using. Crayon was next up, and it was really quite fun to use as it automatically gives you nine different pictures from your single prompt. Asking it to draw roller coasters, though, didn't produce very impressive results, and again, they looked kind of melty or warped. 
I find this site more interesting to play around with in other ways though, such as putting in the name of a famous roller coaster or park and seeing what it came up with. Epcot and Magic Kingdom Park generated some instantly recognisable pictures, but Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure fared much poorer. Universal looks pretty much unrecognisable, apart from maybe some hints of the Minions ride, and Islands of Adventure just looks like a mess. There's maybe the impression of a Schwarzkopf jet star in this image, but the park has never had any coast to like that, and it just looks nothing like Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure at all. Busch Gardens also looks quite generic, but with the eye of faith there's maybe a slight resemblance to the Akumba roller coaster, or possibly even the long departed Drakenfire. Six Flags Parks also look very generic, although there's maybe a hint of Goliath in one of these Magic Mountain pictures. It's just as likely this is a coincidence though, as if you make enough random roller coaster images you'll eventually get something you could recognise. Entering Alton Towers as a prompt gave some surprisingly specific results, however. Now, Alton Towers is probably the most famous park in the UK, and the images generated here look consistently like their Smiler roller coaster. Similarly, Thorpe Park has more consistent results, which could be interpreted as showing their stealth roller coaster. Even using Blackpool Pleasure Beach as a prompt created more than a passing resemblance to its Big One roller coaster in all the images that were generated. It's quite strange how UK parks seem to be more recognisable when this AI is asked to draw them. Using the prompt Europa Park, which is one of the largest parks in Europe, unfortunately seemed to give more generic results as well. I expected to show either the iconic giant golf ball that contains the Can Can roller coaster, or various random European things, but neither of these came up, although you could argue that this image looks a little bit like the Blue Fire roller coaster. Using a prompt for a specific roller coaster created some unusual results too. The prompt for Coney Island Cyclones seemed to produce something more like to the far less famous Cobra roller coaster at Coneyland in Switzerland. The results for Big Thunder Mountain were also kind of cool, especially this one, which kind of looks like that pirate theme park in the Scooby Doo movie. Some prompts were complete misfires though, as when I entered King Dakar, the tallest roller coaster in the world, this is what I got. Likewise, the infamous Japanese roller coaster Dodonpa produced this. I honestly have no idea what the AI was thinking here. Finally, Olympia Looping, the world's largest travelling roller coaster, produced this. Oh well, back to the drawing board, I guess. Crayon was certainly fun to mess around with, but as you see, I found myself getting distracted, and this really wasn't getting anywhere closer to my goal. The next AI, Canva, had some very artistic results. It seemed to go for a nice landscape with a roller coaster inserted into it. Whilst these landscapes and the overall composition do look nice, the roller coasters don't seem to show that much originality, and either look a bit boring or generic or just a bit weird and unfinished. Night Cafe produced some quite nice results, but again they only seem to show partial layouts and were a bit on the melty side. None of these images produced showed a complete ride that could actually exist in reality. The photo AI's attempt looks quite strange and jelly-like, almost as if the AI had got carried away with the ride support structure and got stuck in a loop. Photo did produce some really nice arty night shots of the coaster at night though, but when you look closer, the ride just makes no sense, with track sections that leave nowhere or disappear completely at an intersection. Still, these two images were probably my favourite ones so far. Starry AI created some interesting shots at first, some seem to look like they could have been taken from a theme park map or a roller coaster simulator. It also produced several images of roller coasters surrounded by trees that at first glance look pretty good. On closer inspection though, the errors produced by other AIs are apparent, with bits of track not connecting properly, splitting off from another, or having a strange change of perspective with the supports. Now, I've saved the best image generator for last, and some of these images really speak for themselves. Mid Journey was by far my favourite of all the AI generators. It was a little trickier to use as you had to sign into a Discord server to give the AI prompts, but the results looked much better than anything else I tried. Again, I used prompts for realistic models or technical drawings, and the results looked great. I even produced some neat looking wooden sculptures that I'd quite happily have on my desk or bookshelf as an interesting ornament. Often, this AI created some fantastic looking results and it was really fun to create new variations. This, for example, is what it created when I asked for a Batman themed roller coaster. 
As great as these images were though, you can see the problems that we're having again, where they ignore the laws of physics, twist unnaturally, split off in a weird direction, or just turn into some twisted mess. I also couldn't help but draw a lot of similarities to this strange art installation in Germany that a lot of them seem to be similar to. Putting in real roller coaster names into Mid Journey also created some amazing results. These Coney Island cyclone images seem to have an appropriate postcard sort of style to them, and using Steel Vengeance as a prompt created art that could probably use in a marketing announcement for the ride. Mid Journey's interpretation of the ride to happiness, one of my favourite roller coasters in Belgium, was a bit on the trippy side though, but I guess that's to be expected from the unusual name of the coaster. Once again, I had a bit of fun messing around with creating images of various animals on theme parks rides, and Mid Journey certainly did not disappoint here. Whilst the results of these AI image generators were certainly interesting, and stunning in some cases, they all had problems creating a ride that could be translated into reality, and it was never possible to get a proper 3D layout of a new original roller coaster. It became apparent that this project would need to be split into two final parts. Firstly, getting an AI to specify the design of a coaster, and then creating that design manually in another program. Now, there's multiple programs I could have used to create the coaster, but I decided to stick with Planet Coaster, as it's the one I'm most familiar with and it provides a good deal of flexibility. With this new plan, I headed back to ChatGPT and gave it the prompt. Describe the layout of a fantastic new roller coaster. And this was the result. It was only after I started to build the ride that some glaring problems became apparent. Right at the start, there's some huge flaws in this design. 90 miles an hour is really quite fast and going straight into a 180 degree turn would cause a lot of g-force unless that turn had a really wide radius. I'll take some inspiration from the Donpa and Furious Baco here, as they're the only coasters I can think of that have a turn right after a launch. It would also have to curve upwards to 120 feet in order to fit in the next element specified. Here we encounter more problems though. The initial 90 miles per hour launch provides a lot of energy, and even with a large panoramic turn rising to 120 feet, we're going to have to enter a vertical drop at high speed, and that's sure to create an excessive amount of g-force. Every roller coaster that features a vertical drop has to enter that vertical drop slowly, otherwise the forces just get excessive. For example, Stealth at Thorpe Park launches to 80 miles an hour, but then climbs to over 205 feet, and as you can see, it slows down significantly at the top in order to take the vertical drop. This problem could be solved by adding a lot of trims and brakes before the drop, but that kind of defeats the purpose of a high-speed launch, and only leaves us with 120 feet of potential energy, which is unlikely to be enough to complete the rest of the ride. We'll ignore this for now though, as the rest of the coaster is also looking rather weird. I interpret this part of the design to be at least three hills of different shapes, designed to give floater air around 0g, which is what I've made here. The next instruction is quite strangely worded, as a barrel roll and a heartline roll and a roller coaster are essentially the same element, so for this I combine these two to create a 630 degree heartline roll. Next is a 180 degree turnaround, which is simple enough to make, but we're starting to struggle a bit with a lack of energy to negotiate more elements here. The coaster barely makes it through the zero-g stall, and after this, the ride gets even weirder. A high speed straightaway is what's called for, and it has to reach a top speed higher than the initial launch of 90 miles an hour, before going into a corkscrew and somehow returning to the station. The only way I could figure this out was like this, and I have to say that overall I don't like the look of this layout. There's too many problems with it, and the launch sections just make no sense particularly reaching the maximum energy of the ride just before it ends. This roller coaster's design was just too far from reality, so I returned to ChatGPT with a more refined prompt. Create the layout of a roller coaster, providing as much detail as possible, including the height and length of each section so that it could be designed and built in reality. And this was the result. Now instantly this design looked more interesting to me. Most roller coasters with a lift hill have a first drop that makes full use of the maximum height, but this one didn't. Whilst the lift hill's 150 feet, it only had a 90 foot drop before going into a new element. There was also a vertical loop, but it was spaced part way through the ride, which is again interesting, as most coasters with this element tend to have it immediately after the first drop. 
It also has a cutback, which is a not that common inversion to see these days. It sounded interesting, so I put it together, and this is the result, and it worked. The ride starts with a lift hill that rises to 150 feet. The first drop is 90 feet and goes straight into an Immelman loop. Next is a 70 foot tall airtime hill that then goes into an overbank turn. Next is a vertical loop. Followed by a cutback. A corkscrew. A 50 foot airtime hill. And finally a helix before it enters the brakes. This layout just seemed to work so much better than the last attempt, and it fits together nicely in a realistic manner. It was fairly easy to balance out the forces, and the g-force tolerance seems acceptable for the whole ride. Overall, I think it works really well, and for a roller coaster with a modest height of 150 feet, it packs in some thrilling, well-paced elements. So there we have it, a roller coaster designed by an AI. All that's left to do is name it, and once again, ChatGPT had several pretty good suggestions. Skyline Twister, Thunderbolt Run, Gravity's Fury, Skyraker, Dragon's Breath, Velocity Height, The Cyclone Blitz, The Thunderbolt Twister, The Tempest Twirl, and finally, Raptor's Rampage. Now personally, I like Skyraker the best, but I'm not sure if it sounds a little too close to Skynet for comfort. Anyway, this is the final result of my quest. Skyraker, the first roller coaster designed by AI, as interpreted by me. Now this is just one example of what AI can do in the amusement park industry, and I'm sure someone with more programming skill than me could automate the process much better. It wouldn't surprise me if in the future we do see rides designed with AI, where for example the park could specify a plot of land, and the AI could generate multiple different roller coaster designs that could fit in it, each one designed to be safe and create just the right amount of g-force. If you haven't tried ChatGPT, I suggest you give it a look, as apart from the ride designs or coaster names, you can get it to do some pretty fun or interesting things, such as creating a sitcom based at a theme park, or writing a power ballad about roller coasters. The possibilities AI hold is seemingly endless, which is as scary as it is exciting. I'd love to know what you think of my AI created roller coaster, or where AI can take us in the amusement park industry, so please write a comment and if you've enjoyed this video, I'm pretty sure YouTube has a button or something you can click to show that. I've been Rollercoaster David, thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you again in another video very soon.